The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here, a little technical issue, but the sound is good and we've got the charts coming up and the charts are suggesting that the volatility index is down, uh oh, just went up at up 48 cents at 22.27. Let's go through the numbers. I am going to do it with one hand, other hand holding a telephone, the old fashioned telephone. On this Monday, the 12th of uh, September, we're looking at the Dow up 284 points at 32,435. This is a fabulous move, yet the nine-period moving average is still pink. It's going to have to use a lot of upside energy to be able to cross positive again. The MACD is still negative. It needs at least another probably 200 and 250 points to cross positive. Stochastic is still way down at 28%. On-balance volume is improving. So this is a price movement. I haven't yet got the technicals because the move up was so quick. Four fabulous green bars. So far, the day is young. Looking at the S&P at this particular moment, the S&P is up, gapped up for the second session, up 44 at 4111. And uh, the 200-period moving average is way up at 4171. That's going to take a lot of effort to get there. Uh, the MACD is very close to turning positive. The stochastic is only at 35%. And the nine-period moving average in the daily chart is still underneath the 14-period exponential moving average. Uh, we're looking at the QQQ, NDX 100, and the NDX 100 is trading up 351 at 310.55. Very strong move. This has got a nice gap today. Uh, the 200-period the moving average is way up at 324. How does it get there? I'm not sure in this particular move because this is... The MACD is yet to cross positive. The 9 period moving average pink line on the daily chart is so way under the 14. And we've got uh, the stochastic only at 32%. So this is a very early stage in any, um, any up move. We're looking at the IWM. This is the Russell 2000. Uh, small caps, IWN. Oops, that was a mistake. That's the Russell 2000. I think that's the value. Yeah, I want IWM for mother. And we're looking at a nice gap up, second gap up. It's at um, 189.47, up 2.08. The 200-period moving average is way up at 193. Uh, I shouldn't say way up. It is uh, not like the others. This is attainable, and it's a very good sign. Looking also at the um, at gold, the GC contract is up 9 at 1737. Very nice move off the low. Just under 1700. Now we're at 1737. But really not, it's not great. It's just a very good move. Looking at silver, silver is really the one with the fabulous move. This is up 5% today, up 0.94 at 1971. So silver's, the, the monthly chart is done more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And the, um, the weekly chart is trying to form a cup formation. And it's the next a target to tackle will be the weekly resistance of the 14 period moving average at 19.84 and it's at 1970s so that's very attainable this week and we're looking at uh, crude oil <laughs> this is going to be very important crude oil is having a very strong move uh, it is just above the 200 period moving average at 88.34 up a dollar 55 and even more important than that the weekly chart has a lot of room to move up uh, to start creating uh, a positive in, uh, technical environment, and we're looking at the TLT, which is bonds, the TLT, Lehman 20-year high share treasury bond ETF. Uh, it's at up 40 cents at 108.72, trying to come off the bottom, but it's really that weekly chart, that H formation, uh, to be able to turn it into a uppercase U, to have a powerful move to the upside, you're going to have to have a lot happen before the rates uh, start to come down as the bonds start to rally. So with that, uh, I'm waiting for my uh, my engineer to give me because I'm a little. I'm flying without a compass right now. 
So if my um, sound engineer can tell me how long I've got to go before the break comes, I'd appreciate four minutes of the break. Great. Okay. So there's a lot to discuss here. The SMHs, well, first of all, I, I wanted to talk about a couple of things that uh, just happened over the weekend. So I, I was in New, New Orleans for a couple of days, um, and I was discussing with some uh, realtors there. Um, they were saying that what happened in New Orleans is that they, in March, they realized that they were more than double the uh, gains that they made in 2021 in March, more than double in just two and a half, three months. And then along comes legislation. So besides the interest rate factor, which has really impacted a lot of, a lot of people wanting to buy homes, They've got an insurance factor, that is the flood insurance. So some people saw their, their bills go from 7000 to 21000 I mean, that, that is, it's unattainable. You can't, that is really crazy. So that's a different factor. Tommy was talking about uh, rates. He was talking about uh, real estate earlier on. Really cogent uh, conversation in, the, in his market kickoff at 9 o'clock. Um, and I thought this is just each... Each state, each city, everyone has something going on. And we'll find out in another six to eight months exactly what the impact is with the higher rates, et cetera. That's number one. Number two is I had a very a, a kind of a chilling experience yesterday flying over in Manhattan, uh, going to land at LaGuardia, uh, flying, well, first of all, flying over the tennis is one thing, but flying over the World Trade Center something I've watched uh, soon after it came down. I was in New York about a month after it came down. And then, uh, you know, seeing the the new uh, tower being built, et cetera, and then flying over yesterday, 9-11. What an eerie experience. And, of course, my I just a very emotional moment, I must say, thinking of people that uh, – uh, it's a lot of people from the Boston area that were um, killed. So I uh, remember when the planes – uh, when the plane crashed in uh, the, the towers. So, um, yeah. And the other thing was it was very interesting listening to, uh, listening, watching the tennis on a little 3 by 5 inch screen, and I was like three miles away from uh, Forest Hills, and there I was in the plane watching the tennis. Fantastic game, absolutely. Uh, the Norwegian played brilliantly, but, the, uh, but uh, okay, as well, I mean, that, that was... A 19-year-old comes along. It was fantastic. So I just wanted to get that out the way because I think it's pretty important. Also, I just hear at TFNN hearing that Bud Rolfs passed away is just terribly sad. And may you rest in peace. So um, now let's get back to the markets. We're looking at the SMHs, stopping at the 14-period exponential moving average. To get a rally that is really sustainable, You've got to see those uh, semiconductors moving sharply higher, and I still think that they're in this consolidation phase. I wouldn't be surprised if we are, we are more than two-thirds the way to finding out that uh, the chips are on their way. We've, they've started to be building, uh, you know, all the, all the shutdowns, things have been changing, and that the semiconductors are going to be coming back. But we'll see that. You'll only see that in the price. At this particular moment, we aren't seeing it in the price. Um, in terms of the big picture, but in the small picture, going from 204 to 217 in just a week and a half, that is good action. It's not great. But it is very important that the weekly chart has a higher right side low. And that's important. Up so I can hear the music. Uh, Basil Chap and Tiger Conditions Hour. Dow's up 272. S&P's up 42. I hope to be able to correct this, and I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, 
Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. The S&P is up 49. I had the Chapman Wave uh, trend gauge flash on Friday, but this hasn't worked out at all. There was a moment when the futures, Dow futures, all they went from 100 and up 120 to about up 100, up 30 or 25, and then it went right back up. This particular indicator, so it's very, very seldom does it fail, but it is going to fail today, I'm sure, because up 329, we won't go negative in the down. That's that's what it usually says. Within a very short period after the opening, it should go negative, not today. So this is very good action. A couple of things going on. One of the reasons why we we started getting, uh, getting putting on a lot of new positions over the last. Uh, a uh, couple of days is because I liked very much the way the market tried to retest. And look, for instance, the SMHs, the semiconductors, went to 20416 on the 1st of September and they made a little H pattern and tested them into 204.18. As the stochastic was starting to improve and as the, uh, the price action said, there is a, a little bit of a base forming. How does it? How do you break out of the base? Well, you have to have speed. Number one. Number two is, you have to have a, 
a broad context. And in this particular instance, what we're seeing, and, and subscribers know, we've been watching certain stocks that have just been beaten down for months and months and months. Some of them, I mean, 80, some of them even 90% declines. They were forming bases, and they looked like they were ready. And even if there was a rotational correction, they were ready to start the move up. And that move up essentially said, um, how broad is it coming off this particular low? And the broader it is, the greater the chance that it isn't just a reflexive rally. Now, I have to admit, for subscribers, we've been short the Dow for quite some time. And uh, but then we also went long two separate positions. One was like almost insurance, just a protection. And the other one was a particular position, a trade uh, right at the lows in the Dow. And um, I haven't taken off the short position yet. I wanted to see what happened today. Um, it's still it's still up quite a bit. I don't know if it's been stopped out yet because we do have a stop on it. But the other aspect was that we were in we were getting into certain stocks and certain areas that looked to me to be very appealing. And one thing that's really important about this particular move is that the IAI, the broker dealer index, look at this move, look at that breakout. That is spectacular. I mean, it goes from 99.82. We are long from 2020. In the 45 area, we've been in and out a couple of times uh, in other positions. I, I missed getting long here. I wanted to add long in the broker area, broker dealer area. I missed getting in. But it, here it is. 99.82 was the high on the 16th of August. Uh, on the 1st of September, it hit 91.05. Not a big deal, not even 10%. And then what happens is it bounces. Now, if you're looking at the weekly chart, you can see that it's not going to take very much to get above that 99.82. Uh, it's only a point and something. Uh, maybe even if it was two points. Uh, there's a chance that this week, somehow or other, we can just sneak above that 99.82 for the first leg B that we've seen. Uh, since that high was made at 116.25 in November, the week of the 5th of November. And to me, this is really important. The fact that the broker dealer has gone from the 80 area, what was the low, 80.63, 80, 80 80 and that was in July, runs up to 99. It's almost a 20-point gain. Then it pulls back, but it only pulls back to 91. This is just saying to me, don't rule out that the idea that you have to form a v-shaped bottom with the vix index way up in the high 30s the 40s or something um isn't being that could still happen at a certain point but it might be that you come from a higher level to a higher low and what's really important when i'm looking at the big picture and that's the reason why I just could not find myself as much as I tried. I couldn't be overly bearish in all this in this entire phase. If you're looking at the S&P monthly chart, look at this, 4818.62 to 36.36.87. Yes, that's yeah, over 30%. That's a, that's a big move. But it's an entire year so far. It's been uh, the high was in January and yeah, we are in September. And we're at 41.16. To me, it says that you've used up a lot of time and in some cases a lot of price. But in the S&P itself, with all the bad news, you've had a war, you've had inflation, you've had the, the uh, um, yields skyrocketing, um, oil, I mean, just uh, commodities. And yet, look where we are. I have to be impressed. That's not to say we can't come down again. I'm just saying I'm impressed with what's happened up until this point. And therefore, I want to look at the market as if there's a certain, just at least in the shorter term, a normalization going on. And therefore, there are stocks that could do very nicely. And I think that's where you have to focus. And what I've done for subscribers, I've tried to get into single digit stocks. I like to have price ranges all over the show. It could be high triple digits or it could be single digits. It's in the area that's most important. So the other thing I want to look at is look at the XLF. This is the financial, the S&P Financial Select Spider Fund. That's a very nice move in leg A. It almost looks as if you're, you're talking about the um, the IAI, the broker dealer, because 
This is an important aspect of any market rally. You have to have this uh, because it, within the context of markets, I like to see the financials doing well, almost independent of whether you're coming into uh, – um, Al, if you can just tell me when, I, when I'm about to go into a break, I'd appreciate it. Uh, you know, well, every every time we've got decent rallies in the financials, it just says that there's a certain stabilization in the market. Yes, there's still a downtrend. You're making lower lows and lower highs. Just the most recent uh, month or so, you've seen some nice action to the upside. Fabulous today, up 45 cents at 34.81. I, I do like that. So it's important. I want to see the financial. We do have a bank stock. It's done very, very nicely. And I want to see the XLF trade for two out of three sessions in the next seven or eight market sessions above the 35, 13, 200 period moving average. That to me would be important. So here comes the break, I believe. And I don't know about the seconds or anything like that. But I'm a, I don't want to talk through the break. So I'm going to say, We'll be back in a moment, guys. At the end of the video, guys, I got the questions. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We are back, and uh, we're looking at the Dow, still up 326. And I'm trying to do my two things at once here. Uh, okay, here we go. So the, in the E-mini futures, we just made a peak D in the one-minute chart, but it's walking the, the, the nine-period moving average, the green nine-period moving average. Nothing to see right now. It's still acting very well. And this is very important. The, the spiral that we've just had in the 10-minute chart, which I, I had put F slash A earlier on. Now we're much higher. The way it's looking, I have to consider with the stochastic at 94%, the MACD is good, 
that this is probably an A that we can chop around, chop around, have a bit of a, a pullback. But if we pull back and then we go above for, uh, the high so far today is 41.19, 75. If we start to get to 41.25, there's going to be a whole new burst of buying as far as I can see. But right now, short term, I think we're very close to some kind of at least a, a digestive phase intraday. All right, let's get back to our story. What did I want to look at? I want to look at a couple of things. If you look at the SLX, this is the... Uh, this is the this is the uh, steel. It's called the Van Eck Vectors Steel ETF, trading at fifty six point oh six, up seventy two cents. The way it held so well um, since the low that was made, so it's gone from seventy point forty three in April, the week of the twenty second. It's come down to the forty. I think it was forty-seven. I don't think it's oh, forty-six something. There it is. Okay, it went to forty-six seventeen on the fourteenth of July, and then it started to make an an a uh, cup formation right here, and it stopped at a leg E, went to a peak D with a Doji candle, held a two hundred period moving average, and that became a repellent, then a propellant, and then a repellent line, and it hasn't gone back there until today. Today, what is it doing? It's almost touching at 56.24. It's almost touching the 56.32, 200 period moving average yet again. This is the third time. And look at the sequence. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bars before that peak right there on the 26th of August at 57.50. Then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bars today. And it's testing the 200 period moving average. So you've got the synchronicity of the, uh, the, uh, the, the bar, left side, right side bar synchronicity or movement. And now what we're looking at is, is it possible that the steel sector is telling us, look, if you even look at the weekly chart, not a great pattern. It's not a bad pattern. You can tell me that uh, the, the steel sector, the deep cyclicals, that is, and I'm even going to put it in with Caterpillar. Caterpillar is almost the same chart pattern. Caterpillar, heavy-duty equipment. Deer is a little different because deer has to do with um, agricultural site, tractors, farm equipment, and yet look where it is. And if I go to the DBA, which is the, we are still along the DBA, DBA Agricultural Fund, trading at 20.60, that has had quite a sharp pullback in the weekly and the monthly, and yet the monthly is still right now sitting on the nine-period exponential moving average. So when I try to put this picture together, I, I went to it on Thursday, I think it was, and then over the weekend, I had a moment and I, I was looking at the charts, and I said, I'm going to try to be as negative as possible. I'm going to go to those deep cyclicals. I'm going to even include a, a general motors. And look at this, General Motors is up 95 cents today, 42.24, sitting for the first time just above the 200 period exponential moving average of the daily. When was the last time that General Motors touched it? It touched it briefly on the way down on the 2nd of February at 55.55, uh, but it had about three months trading above it when it went above it back in September a year ago, exactly a year ago, September, the week of the 22nd of 2021. And it just dipped under it once, and it kept becoming a propellant, and then it became a repellent. So do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to say that I looked at it saying, okay, let's see all the deep cyclicals. How bad is this? And then I looked and I thought, you know, this is not too bad. I mean, this is after eight months. Here we are. So anything can happen, but in the shorter term, there's definitely a sense that a tremendous amount has been accomplished. The higher, uh, if you want to look at this, look at look at wheat. I'm trying to give you the, the, the negative picture. Look at wheat. We're looking at the commodities now. So wheat, look at this monthly chart. Not a great looking chart. It goes to 13.63 and a half. Well, that's a, a continuous contract, so the price will be changing. But the high that was made on the 8th of March of 2022, then it retested close to that, and then it plummets underneath the 200 period moving average, which is at 9.20 right now. And here we are, H58 in leg E, um, trying to at least stabilizing. And that's really important. So that's wheat, 
let's look at um, soybeans. Soybeans, there we go. Uh, that's just gone sideways. It had a fabulous move up to the 15, what is it, about 15, I'd say 1560s. It's a continuous contract. It's down. The plummet's under the 200 period moving average, tries to peak that as support. Meantime, at 1351, which is the 200 people moving the average now. Here it is at 1570, trying to really look at um, corn. Corn is trading very nicely, well above the uh, 200 period moving average, done a beautiful cup formation, making the handle not one, not one of my favorite patterns, but walking the 9 period moving average. So even with the grains still holding pretty well, when you think about the big picture, this market has been holding. I still expect within today, later today, or maybe tomorrow, we get some kind of a digestive, uh, a bit of a slowdown, maybe even Wednesday. But it seems to me there's enough buying activity to suggest that within the context of what's gone on for the year. Remember, I'm trying to put it into the big picture. I want it to be very negative. I kept coming back and saying, you know, this is good. This is not bad. Look at the XLK. This is the XLK. is one of the, one of the worst sectors. Um, they got slammed. This is the S&P uh, Select Tech Spider Fund. Still holding pretty darn well. It should have broken down much more with some of those tech stocks just being lambasted throughout the year. And here we are. It's very nice action. So within that context, I'm just saying I couldn't get as negative as I wanted to. I especially said, this is terrible. Let's, let's look at it as if it's terrible. But in fact, all the stuff I've been looking at said, this is holding really well. See, it's actually still holding really well. So I want you to get, get the picture in terms of my own time frame. Uh, within that context, even within sectors, some stocks within the sector. I, look, let me go to Hack. Hack is the, uh, this is the, Bug is another one. This is the c c Cyber Security ETF, Generic Prime Cyber uh, ETF. So, it's come down quite sharp. I made that a phantom peak right there. I just want everything to be in sync. So it goes to 80, uh, 67 or 97 in November. Drops sharply. But my big thing has been, why on earth is the cyber, have the cyber stocks where you, you I mean, surely cyber is such a big deal everywhere. Why would the cyber stocks not doing very nice, doing, doing well at all? And they still look, look, here we go. Let's go to cyber, C-Y-B-R. Um, that's done quite nicely. It's done better than the actual hack chart. And if you go to CRWD for our strike, uh, another one, this is on top. So it's actually uh, in the P A N W P A P A N W. Also, this is actually holding quite well, but hack itself as a generic cybersecurity ETF hasn't done all that great. So you've got to be very stock specific. Trying to do that as You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman, this is the Tiger Technicians Hour, just trying to uh, sort out a little couple of problems. We've got a question from uh, Phil in Puerto Rico about NRP. NRP is called the uh, Natural Resources Partners LP, trading at 46.95. So the big question for me, when I look at a chart like this, and I look at the monthly, it's had a spectacular move. It's gone from uh, around about the 8-ish area all the way to the 50s, and then it pulls back to the 35, 36 area, and now it's back in the 46 area. It says to me that it's in play. And what do I mean by in play? In play suggests to me that pullbacks can be bought, but the timing of the pullbacks is important. And when you look at, when I say timing, look at this. Here's a stock that's trading toodle, 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 as if nothing's happening. Uh, it pulls back a little bit, goes under the 200 period moving average back in 6th of July. And then whoop, it spikes from 3621. Uh, it goes in three days, it goes to 42.70. That, that's a big percentage move. Oh, oh, oh. It pulls back. It has to retest the 200 period moving average. It does that. Then it goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. I'm using one hand, so I'm not going to type here. But I will put in a D right there, uppercase D, uppercase on the way up, and lowercase on the way down. And then it pulls back. Now, technically, I should go with a down arrow. In time, it would be appropriate to go to a down arrow. But in price, look. It held the nine. The nine didn't go. Uh, I mean, the nine didn't go under the 14 to change to pink, even on the big dip down to the 41s from the 46 high that it made. And now it's trading at 45, uh, 46.95, up 81 cents. So, I, Phil, I don't know whether you're long. If you're looking at it, I'm going to make a suggestion here. You see these sharp drops, and then it goes sideways, and then it has a big move up. It's a stair step move. Um, it's a pattern that makes timing very important. Now, the fact that it's held at the highs for four sessions, let's call it three sessions because of that, that Wednesday pop to the upside, that's a change in character. And it says, yes, you could pull back. Either you're going to pull back way deeper or you're going to pull back much, much milder. I'm going to say if you're not in it, at 46.95, you start your position. It's not your full position. It's just a starter position, meaning that it is a smallish position in this case. And one of the reasons is you can add to it if it strengthens because that weekly chart, this is not, yeah, this is not a leg A. Remember the bar that makes the low cannot also be a high. So this low right here on the week of the 8th of August, Sorry, 8th of July at 40 at 3621. You have to wait for a higher low bar to say you've turned the corner. Now you're looking at higher lows. So this is where it starts. So that cannot be an A. 
So I'm going to put it in here, A, and for those of you who are new to my work, that A gets canceled out because it's not an official, it, it, it isn't even an unofficial A, it just cannot be in the Chapman Wave methodology. That is wrong. So I'm going to put a big stroke through, in fact, I'm making an X. That cannot be a high. That is A, and then you move to the upside, and we're in the process of in leg, leg B, because you've got a whole week to go. If it takes out the high that was made last week in the 47, I'll tell you right now, 47.30, if it goes one penny above 40, uh, 47.30, that extends leg B for this week. And then you're looking at the monthly chart. So this is really nice action. And I'm going to say a little more than a starter position right here. But I would also in my mind say I'd like to split it into two. I'd like to get one position right here at 46.95. But if it doesn't push quickly into the 47.32 area, but it says starts to digest gains uh, starting tomorrow or the next day without making a new recovery high above 47.30, I would say I'd add to another add to it another position in the 44. I wouldn't like it to go below 4460 on the short term to add, but if it pulled back to the just under 45, just pull back under 45, I would add another small position. So now you've got yourself two positions looking at higher highs, uh, hope for higher recovery highs, and then you could even add to it. Let's just see what happens. So I hope that helps you. A uh, question, a couple of questions came in. Oh, I can't even see it. Let me just see if I can move this away. Got it right here. Uh, the YouTube, Tiger YouTube. Uh, yeah, Island Reversal on on Hack and GPK, uh, Rochelle. So this is very interesting. GPK. Uh, this is Graphic Packaging Holdings. Fabulous move up. I so much wanted to get into it about three days ago. It was making a pattern that I identified as Chapman falling axe formation. But there were so many other things that we were looking at. You know, when things start to move uh, up, there's always just not enough money and too many too many stocks to get. So I had to just be as conservative as possible. This is a fabulous move. Yes, Rochelle, this is a this is a tremendous move because it's an all time high. This is a brand new, I'm going to call it, I have to be faithful to my technique. I'm calling it E slash A in the daily chart. My bias right now is to think that this really could be an A. Oh, I'm sorry, B. It says E slash B in the daily chart. It's a D in the weekly. But stocks that make new all-time highs tend to stay on new all-time high list for quite a while. And this is so bullish because... Um, <clears throat> Uh, we, I was looking at it recently. <laughs> I have a subscriber who's uh, worked for the for for the company, then retired. Uh, new all-time high, and this graphic packaging holdings. This is just telling us. So there was an. Oh, what was? Oh, PKG is the other one. I always PKG. PKG is the other one I always look at. Uh, PKG is not acting as well. It's kind of stuck in the lower range. Packaging core of America, 168.50 was the high in April of this year. It's pulled back quite sharply to the 133 area, now it's trading at 143, just starting to get go. No, no, no. I like the PK, uh, G, PK. That's a much better chart. At highs, you want charts at all-time highs. If you can get them, because you mustn't be afraid, stocks that make new all-time highs tend to stay on the list for a little while. Stocks that make lower lows, uh, all-time lows, tend to stay on that list for a little while. So I'm going to ask my... Engineer L to give me give me a yell when he wants me to cut out for the final segment, uh, the last break. And yes, see, this is what I'm saying. This is such a mixed market. If you don't listen to the news, I mean, everywhere I go, with people rolling their eyes at a big gathering I was I was at over the weekend. Uh, you know, people were shaking their heads about the market. I never I never said a word. I'm just listening to everyone. And uh, the news is much worse than the charts. So I believe we've got uh, about a minute to the break. So before we go into the break, I, there were three things I want to just quickly look at. One was natural gas. I had a question about that. Natural gas is starting to move up again, but it's not a great chart. So it's kind of stuck, but this is usually the season that it starts to move. I'm watching it closely. That's, what, that's uh, natural gas. Uh, the other one was RH. Uh, is that telling us anything? No, this is uh, RH is a former... 
uh, RH. It's the, oh man, uh, I used to know the solo RH. Um, anyway, they're into handles and all sorts of things to do with uh, um, furniture, and it's not a good chart at all. So that's a problem, and Home Depot was the other one. Uh, a Home Depot trading at uh, 301. It's had a big move up, and now it's in the big consolidation. I think this really is part of the housing sector. So you've got to be individualized. You've got to be looking at what's working, what's are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman here. And this is the Dow's Up 302, giving a little bit of a pullback. If you look at the one-minute chart I mentioned before, we made that peak D, and now that was at about uh, 10, 28 in the morning Eastern time. Now we're pulling back some. I, I suspect there'll be some di digestion uh, after such a big move. And I, I'm going to be watching this 10-minute chart, this single leg A. I think I've missed something. I did. Uh, is, that, is that A and this is B? If it's B, it's different. Anyway, we're watching this closely. Uh, over the period of the day, if the if the um, E mini at four four eleven ten point two five right now starts to close under four forty one hundred, 
it says you're in for a, a bit of a pullback, maybe going into tomorrow morning. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, question came in. Um, I've got uh, Bank of America calls. We are long Bank of America, by the way. Uh, 32 October calls. And uh, what am I looking at? The question is, so I'm looking at this. I love the move in Bank of America right now, but I think it's still a little early in the, in the, in the whole process. So I would do this. You've got a fabulous gain right now. Take some money off because you're talking about options. Options diminish in premium really quickly either way. So take something off. I would like to keep a position all the way into, well, September is going to be uh, 16th. That's this Friday. So you're going for a whole uh, an options expiration in a month's time. I wouldn't get too carried away. I'd try to keep at least something for October right now. I would definitely take something off of 36. Question came in about GSM. GSM, I think I've done this before. Yeah, GSM, very nice move up today. Ferro Globe PLC trading at $7.15, up $0.18. Cents. Yeah, made a peak E. I love this pattern. You know I love this channel. And it's broken out of it to extend. You want to see 720, 728 by tomorrow, holding the 710 area. And then that'll be a good sign. So I think I'm going to be wrapping up in a moment. Or I'll go to, uh, I'll go to.